This is Demon Phoenix with another video about Dead Space 3, this one covering the Hardcore difficulty. Hardcore is set to Hard mode, which isn't too difficult on Dead Space 3, but part of the problem is, if you die, then you have to go right back to the beginning and it deletes your progress for that save slot. Uh, one of the things you can do to make it easier is just to make sure that you have completed pure survival mode first. Uh, this gives you all of the Mark II parts and lets you build uh, anything you want pretty much at the start of the game because it also gives you the mega resources deposit which lets you either, like I say, build weapon parts or upgrade your armour or anything like that. Uh, hardcore mode is all about just knowing the tactics and being able to react to things, just knowing some of the difficult parts in the game. Uh, I would seriously recommend that you play it through on the other difficulties first, uh, just to have a bit of familiarity. And any of the instant death parts like chapter 7, chapter 13 particularly with the ice climbing and towards the end of the game, uh, you practice those possibly on impossible first or run through them using the chapter select before you do them on hardcore, uh, just to have the familiarity there. If you want to watch my weapon arena tip video, uh, it tells you how to get the plus two plus two circuits right away when you get to chapter three and you can build a couple of those and that makes the early game a bit more manageable. Uh, I, I use the mark two parts to build a weapon as soon as I get to part three and uh, I tend to avoid building unnecessary weapon parts so for chapter three I go with the military engine and I uh, make the galvanizer which is using the plus two directed suspension field and uh, the Mark II directed suspension field and I also put a force gun on there. Uh, instead of using the default tip you can still use the Mark II tip to give you a little extra reload because the Mark II parts give a boost as you'll see here. Ah, rate of fire, sorry, is slightly increased. You can also put things on there. The galvanizer has decent clip size but not amazing so I tend to go with either the ammo box so to save your reload or the stasis coating. Uh, later on you can start the Greeley mission and you don't actually have to do any of it because you can just build a tungsten torque bar and you can get the telemetry spike that's in that tungsten torque bar room with only having to fight one enemy and then just quit out to the menu and use the weapon arena to build the weapon you want. Uh, that's in my early game Dead Space 3 video if you want to check that out. And uh, what I do is I build whatever weapon you are most comfortable with. And for me, that is the diffraction torus with the telemetry spike, which makes the chain gun. And then put the stasis coating and the force gun on that. You can knock things back and then you can take them out with the actual chain gun. Use whichever weapons you're most comfortable with, because hardcore is all about being comfortable and having the weapons that you'll be able to react to any situations with. So go with what you know, go with what you're comfortable with. Uh, in terms of the actual ration seals you get from the scavenger bots, you can either get the uh, resource packs which are 10 ration seals and they give a good amount of resources and it's actually the best ratio of ration seals to resources. Bear in mind if you get the ultra packs which are 30 ration seals, you get either one or two mark 5 parts but you don't have restart checkpoint in hardcore mode so you can't restart checkpoint to buy the packs again and that, that trick doesn't work. One of the weapons to consider making later on and one of my personal favourites is really good for feeders and a couple other enemies is to put a second, is to build a second telemetry spike and put it with the electrocution module. The actual shots from the telemetry spike don't matter, it's the electrocution module that's the main thing. The electricity doesn't hurt you so you can use it on feeders at point blank range like that and also if you kill a waster with it they will never transform like you saw there they will just die from the electricity. Don't be afraid to mix things up and to switch some weapons if you know that they'll be useful for a certain part. Like if you get a survey charge in chapter 8 and I will always use it for this boss because if you put the survey charge with a directed suspension field it makes a rocket launcher and as you see there you can very quickly take the tentacles out. If you shoot right at the base of where the three tentacles are it can actually blow off all three at once like this and then all you have to do is take out the antennae when it comes out and the boss comes towards you and that just deals with it straight away and saves you a bunch of ammo as well fucking thing so uh, there are a couple of bits that are quite difficult like I say make sure you practice all the instant death things and the ice climbing a lot there are certain parts like this that can be quite tricky this particular area uh, the the stalkers don't come out until you kill this first crawling one so if you run straight past it it stops you getting hit from behind whilst you're trying to take the others because you can get right to the edge here and then take all the enemies out the music's extremely loud on this bit so just you know concentrate and stay right at the back because some necros will bust out of the snow right in front of you so you need to be right at the back so you can take them out
one of the bits that's extremely difficult in my opinion is the uh, part here in chapter 15. A bunch of black necros come out and it's made all the more difficult by the human enemies that come out after that as well. After you've taken out a few of the black necros, a guy will spawn up top and he starts throwing grenades and he's quite difficult to take out. It is this guy there. See there he's already thrown a grenade. You can try and get around this corner and stay away from him, but one of the things you can use is a Tesla core and a diffraction torus, which makes the chain lightning gun, because when you hit them like this, the lightning branches off and that will actually one hit kill the human enemies as well. So you can take them out a little easier. And one of the things I always make sure I have for this point is one of your weapon parts being a seeker rifle and the full zoom scope because once you've done this first bit you'll see here there the lightning branches off from the chain lightning gun and kills that guy up top so you don't have to bother with him and you can actually hit the enemies while standing around the corner because the lightning branches off. So like I was saying the second part of this you get a brief respite when you've killed all these guys and four soldiers that drop down and then when you come towards the door at the end you need the seeker rifle or something similar to be able to hit these two rocket guys who spawn up top there's one and down he goes and there's the other and then quickly switch to a close range weapon because a bunch of twitches will spawn at the same time again just switch to whatever you're cl more comfortable with for the close range and take him out after that be careful and just make sure you practice the into death bits that's the best advice i can give and good luck now my next video I'm going to pick something else but I'm not quite sure so maybe Dead Space 2 Hardcore or something like that. Let me know what you'd like to see. Thank you for watching.